Imagine a world where sharing ideas and collaborating freely are the pillars of technological progress. A world where freedom and innovation go hand in hand. GNU's not Unix. That is what GNU, G-N-U, stands for. The GNU project started off as an ambitious initiative aimed at developing a completely free and open source operating system along with a suite of compatible software, but ended up having a much more profound impact on the world of software development than anyone could have imagined. This video is the second in my series, The Making Of, telling the history of some of the most important software of the past that shaped our present, not just the software of today, but the entire industry of software development, with the next episode being about the making of BSD. As a follow-up to the many comments received on episode one, The Making of Linux, about it being the actual world's first open source operating system. So we're gonna address that. To stay tuned for that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the notification bell turned on so I can continue to make this free content for all. Our tale begins in the early 1980s at the prestigious MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory where Richard Stallman, a passionate computer programmer and MIT alumnus, was working. And in the lab, there was this printer, a printer that frequently jammed. So. Stallman and his colleagues had modified the printer software to send a notification whenever it jammed so someone could fix it. But when the lab received their new printer from Xerox, the software was proprietary. So Stallman couldn't make similar modifications to improve its functionality like he had previously. He reached out to Xerox to obtain the source code, but the company refused to share it. This event was a turning point for Stallman. It made him realize how proprietary software restricted users' freedom to study, modify, and share the software, and he saw this trend towards proprietary software as a significant threat to the collaborative environment that had existed in the computing community for years. I think that's sick. I think that's a bad social organization because we're encouraging most what's not good for us. And frankly, he was frustrated by it a frustration that motivated him. And with unwavering determination, Richard Stallman announces the GNU project on September 27th, 1983, and then resigns from the MIT AI lab in 1984 to work on it full time. Stallman outlines all of the project's objectives and philosophy in the now famous GNU Manifesto, a rallying cry for the importance of users' freedom in the development of free software. But he realizes he can't do it alone. So in 1985, he founds the Free Software Foundation, or FSF, to support the GNU project and promote the free software movement. The FSF becomes the project's beating heart, providing legal and financial backing to help fund the development of this free software and other free software alike. To clarify, the word free in the name does not refer to price, it refers to freedom. You should think of free as in free speech, not as in free beer. Over time, a band of talented developers joined Stallman's cause, creating a suite of groundbreaking software components, primarily written in C. Still in 1985, the powerful GNU Emacs text editor is released, followed by the versatile GNU compiler collection, or GCC as you may have heard it, in 1987, and the robust GNU debugger, or GDB, in 1988. Each line of code brings the dream closer and closer to reality, a free and open operating system that empowers users across the globe. As the project gains momentum, Stallman introduces the first version of the GNU General Public License, or GPL, in 1989. This ingenious legal framework protects the rights of free software users and developers, ensuring that GPL licensed software remains free and open for all to modify and redistribute. And this brings us to 1991. Enter a young Finnish computer science student with a penchant for tinkering, Linus Torvalds. You see, back in 1987, Andrew S. Tannenbaum developed Minix, a Unix-like operating system intended for academic use. But given its 16-bit architecture, it wasn't well adapted to Intel's increasingly popular 386 design for PCs. The microprocessor Linus was using at the time. So Minix couldn't accomplish what Linus wanted to do, which led him to create this little kernel you may have heard of called Linux in 1991. 
A kernel is the core of an operating system, responsible for managing resources, providing access to hardware, and communicating with other software. But he hadn't created other software, like text editors, compilers, core utility tools, or debuggers, like GNU already had. But the kernel, that's one thing GNU was missing. Stallman saw Torvald's kernel as the missing piece of the puzzle and set out to integrate it with the rest of the GNU operating system. Initially, Torvalds released the Linux kernel under its own license, but in 1992, he released the kernel under the GNU General Public License, and even stated making Linux GPL'd was definitely the best thing I ever did. So now that Linux was GPL licensed, the Linux and GNU developers worked to combine the Linux kernel with the existing GNU components to create a fully functional and free operating system known as GNU slash Linux. The GNU components included were GNU Bash, a Unix shell or CLI, GNU Core Utilities, Emacs, GCC, GDB, as previously discussed, as well as the GNU C library or glibc, and even a few more, all of these components with the Linux kernel at its core. The GNU Linux operating system, commonly referred to simply as Linux, spreads like wildfire eventually becoming the foundation for countless devices and systems worldwide. But we already went over that in the making of Linux, the world's first open source operating system. This right now is kind of the merging point of the two videos, where in that one, you can see how the Linux kernel came about, merged with GNU, and learn just how prevalent GNU Linux is today. Speaking of today, the tireless pursuit of a free and open digital landscape continues as developers work to improve existing components, create new software, and spread the message of free software around the world, preventing what happened to closed AI from happening to them. <laughs> Selling out, that's what happened to OpenAI and why I call them closed AI. Didn't you watch that video, the untold story of OpenAI? Anyway, what began as Richard Stallman's vision has grown into a global movement that champions the values of freedom, collaboration, and community-driven innovation. The GNU project and the GNU Linux operating system have not only inspired countless developers and users, but also laid the foundation for a thriving free and open source software ecosystem. If I could ask you a favor from those of you who made it this far and enjoyed the video, Share it with your friends. The more I know y'all like it, the more inclined I am to make more episodes in this series. Also comment what software or even hardware or other historical technologies you'd like to see in this series. I appreciate you all for the never ending support, really. And uh, until next time.